Hello Internet, Jojo here, and today we're doing a tier list. Now, I don't do tier lists, I never have, but I thought it'd be interesting considering the most recent events in the manga of One Piece. So let's just get into this and see how it goes. I'm also recording without a script, so this is completely unprepared, much like my video last time. The one, the uh, chapter review. So to start this off, we have S, A, B, C, D, E, F, and a question mark. Tears. Question mark is for those who, well, when I get to them, I'm not sure quite where to put them because until you really get some context around where the characters go, like the high and lows, you might change things around. Start off with Chopper. Now, he has his mastered monster point, if you will, and if I call correctly, that was able to injure Queen. So, I would probably put him on no more than two tiers below Queen, but I'm not sure where Queen's going to go. However, I think that we all know the S tier will be for the Yonkos, and the A, so the A tiers will probably go for their captains and, and the like. So let's for now, let's put him B. We might move him around if there is a massive difference between A and B ranks, but for now, we'll just go with it and see. Hawkins. Hawkins got beat pretty easily in every fight he's been in so far. So well, I do think he would probably end up beating Chopper in a fight. I think it would be an incredibly difficult fight, and he would only win because he has more raw skill and experience fighting people. So because of that, I'll put him in C, just the raw power difference. Now, Black Maria. She is a Toby Ropo, so she would also probably go in the B tier with Chopper, give or take. We're just going to see where things fit and move around from there. Now, she's not quite as strong as Queen or King, but she's pretty strong. I think she's worthy of that ranking. Now, whether it comes to raw power, uh, probably put in the C, but we'll see. Brooke. Oh, shoot. I, I really... I don't know. I don't know, honestly. I feel like he's the oddest one in the group because he hasn't had any major events around him in this arc. So, we'll just put him there in the question mark tier to see. Now, Big Mom, that's a pretty easy S tier. Ah, uh, Perro Sparrow. Now, Perro Sparrow is technically Vice Captain or First Commander. And he did give Marco a run for his money. He fought Marco for quite a while. So, despite him not being presented as much of a threat like King, Queen, Zoro, Katakuri, I think that he probably is an A tier fighter. Denjiro. Now, the uh, scabbards never really impressed me, to be fair, but it's quite clear that he is strong, and other scabbards were able to take on Jack, so we'll put him in the B tier with Chopper. You know, I think I'm going to move Chopper down, because I simply don't think he can compete with the others in that tier. Now, Law. Now, with the most recent version of the manga, I think it's fair to say that Law is A tier, or somewhere between A and S tier. Zoro. Now, I also think he's probably A and S tier. Kid. Yeah. Frankie. He managed to take out a Toby Ropo, so let's put him in B tier. Now, I'd say that most of the scabbards are going to fit into B or somewhere between B and A. So I don't like putting, like, you know, A plus because it feels just odd in comparison. Because what's the point of having a plus there if you have all these letters to go through? So instead of that, move Chopper and Hawkins down and move these other characters down. And now we have B as a free tier to use. And then we can move Dinjiro up a tier because I do think that they are most likely stronger than the Toby Robo. Now how much stronger is a question for a later date. But I do think they are a bit stronger. Um, Gene Bay beat his Toby Robo so let's put him next to the scabbards. Kaido clearly S tier. Oh boy. Well, he is technically a scabbard. Uh, now, Drake. Drake is an odd one as well, because you would think that he would be in the A tier, but he really hasn't done anything to put him there at all, which is odd to me, because all these other characters had massive jump in power, but Drake just never did. So, while I can see him being one of the stronger of the Toby Ropo, I can't see him really taking out someone like Gene Bay. So, he's going to go in just a regular Toby Ropo rank. 
Okay, come on. Also, here we go. So King. Yep, King is an A tier. Luffy. Now, I think Luffy is definitely an S tier fighter here, just simply because of what he's doing now on the roof. And this is probably gonna be pretty uh, controversial, but I only think that Marco is on par with these other guys here. Now, he could compete with King and Queen at the same time, that is true. But they weren't going all out as we saw in their fights against Zoro and Sanji. Queen was not using the German technology and King was not really using his other forms as much. And even then, he really only managed to slow them down for a while. He still didn't really win in any way. I think he's only A. Some people put him as S. I don't think he is S. Nami. Okay, so I guess we have our first E class. Okay, is it going to be weaker? Put her at F. So, Nami and I guess Usopp, I guess we'll get to him in a little bit, will act as the lowest tier outside of fodder characters. So, I think we can comfortably put Brook and E above them. And I think that we'll keep Chopper where he is because he has his monster point, which is much stronger than the other characters. Uh, Nekomamushi. Also a scabbard, but no, scabbard tears. Oh, Kiku, scabbard. Who is that? I, I, I cannot see. I think uh, that's Robin. I would know those legs anywhere. It's Robin. Robin, she also managed to beat her own Toby Ropo. Barely. So I'll put her on par with them. The question comes here is do we include Orochi's double fruit into the mix? And all well, that problem with that we don't know what his over does we've seen it a couple times and, and most times it's been effectively one shot i would say that he's probably at his best probably d tier because i i can't see him beating any of these other characters because he simply doesn't have the combat ability or knowledge to it he's more like the spondum of wano if you will spondum doesn't have that great of power but his del fruit his del fruit sword is quite impressive if you were to hit someone with it and now we have Izo. He was a commander on Whitebeard's ship and fought by Marco before. And even now, he's contending with, say, you know, the CP9. So, I would say that he's probably A tier. If I had to break them into sub tiers, I would put him as a lower A tier because he just doesn't seem to have shown that much impressive feats and abilities off. But for now, we don't have. A and A plus tiers. It's just straight up A. And I don't want to put him on the same tier as the other scabbards because I feel like he's considerably stronger. Wait. I thought I put him. Anyway, okay, the doggy. Same tier as Caddy. Jack. Jack's a weird one. Jack might be the reason we need sub tiers, to be fair. Because he managed to beat two scabbards in pretty much back to back fights. So maybe. So I will put him. Hmm. I'll put him as a uh, B tier. I, I think he's probably the top of B tier, but like I said before, we don't have subcategories here, which is unfortunate. See, Wano has a huge range of characters with powers and abilities. This huge, these characters' skills deviate massively. So, problems. Uh, page one, he is a Toby Ropo. Queen, definitely a, a tier. Rizo. Mm. The problem with Rizo is that he's not a physical fighter. He has a lot of cheats and skills, but I don't think he's not a fighter. If another scabbard fought him and managed to land a hit, I think he'd pretty much be done because he doesn't have the physical stats on par of them. He has the tricks, so I think I'm going to put him on a C tier. Now we have Ulti, uh, definitely, on the, definitely on C tier with page one and the rest. Sanji, very clearly A tier. I cannot remember this guy's name to save my life. Okay, problem with Wano for me has been so many names are hard to pronounce that I haven't even tried. So that's why I don't remember most of their names. Uh, yeah, he's definitely a C. And now I have Apu. Apu, again, really odd character, C tier. Because right now we're taking these characters at where they are currently in the manga. When Zoro fought Apu, he hadn't unlocked his nuke's abilities. He hadn't shown off yet. But now he's shown to be much of a higher tier entirely. Whereas Apu is C tier with X Drake, I'd say. I'd say that his durability is top notch, or just his survivability is top notch. But outside that, I'm pretty sure most of these other characters could just wreck him. Oh, another, another scabbard. Usopp. 
Usopp has high durability, I would say, but he lacks the offensive power to actually make it to a tier up with Brook. Wait a minute. That's not... That's killer, isn't it? Okay, hold on a second. I have no idea who this is. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's killer. It's 100% killer. Okay, they tricked me by putting him in that outfit. This is killer. Okay, killer... I would probably put him in the same tier. He easily overwhelmed Hawkins. Hawkins will only challenge because he had a doll connected to Kid. But he easily belongs in this tier. I hesitate to say that... You know what? No, he is probably a high B tier because he managed to fight and hurt Kaido. Whereas the Scabbards together didn't deal as much damage as he did. I'd say, at least. So now you have who's who. I definitely put him... Yeah, I definitely put him as a Tobiropo. And then... X Drake, who also goes there. Now this is just overall, on the individual levels, I would have to break it down even further. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that, I think. Let's go ahead and break it down a little further. I think we'll just start with the top two ranks. Okay, so we're, we're going to be focusing on the top characters, so the first commanders and the like. I think we'll drop these. I think just to get rid of them, we'll drop most of these dudes in the question mark category. Oh, no, who's who? There we go. I, th uh, I think that's all of the A and S rank that we had last time. Let's go ahead and rank these guys up. Okay, so, yet again, we have Big Mom, Kaido, but now we are ranking them on a, a six tier scale. And Kaido is considered the strongest. But when it comes down to it, I don't think Big Mom can really claim to be equal to Kaido in physical power. She has other abilities that make her powerful, but in a fight, I don't think Big Mom could win. Big Mom's strong over large groups, but Kaido's strong one-on-one. -on -one. So in a one-on-one -on -one fight, which is generally what most people talk about when they talk about tears, about Pero is Pero. Um, uh, put him on E. I think he lacks a lot of abilities. Like he's not as strong as Katakuri. I don't think anyone's... I'm pretty sure they established that. Law. Now, by himself, Law doesn't have as many options in a fight. But, I still put him as B. I think most of these characters are going to be a, a B tier. Like, Zoro. It took Law and Kid to beat Big Mom. But it only took Zoro to beat King. And once Zoro managed to coat his blades with conquerors, he one-shot King. So if that version of Zoro was fully healed, I think he could probably beat a fully healed Law or Kid, probably. So Kid also goes on this ranking, simply because he is very clearly depicted as being equal to Law. Now King, I would put him at a C tier, simply because he has been surpassed by the characters above him. If this was what, 10, 20 chapters ago, he would be on par with them. But these characters simply moved up a rank, forcing him down a rank. Their power boosts simply changed the ranking system. Now, Luffy. Now, this is a weird one, because technically, Luffy had some time to heal when he got thrown off Onigashima. But so did Kaido. No one was constantly landing hits on him, and we already know that zones are known for their regeneration. So it really is an interesting question. Also, the fact that he has barely left his base form the entire fight, or Kaido's been in his hybrid form for most of it. Also, and then you have the fact that Kaido's drunken form or whatever boosts his hockey and he's still able to keep up. I, I, so I would honestly put him here with Kaido unless something else happens. He could easily be an A rank, but needless to say, these are not weak tiers. This could be a 1% difference between the two, but I'm pretty sure competing with Kaido is more impressive than competing with Big Mom, especially in his base form. So unless we want to get even more specific, I would put him between Big Mom and Kaido. Now Queen, on par with King, because the same reason as before, went down the same way pretty much that King did. 
Marco. Hmm. Actually, I think... Now, Marco. I would put Marco in C tier. When he fought Big Mom, he didn't do too well. But I still think that before the last couple of chapters, he would have been above Zoro, Kid, and Law. But now, it's very clear that he's they're very very close to power. They're very, they're very close in power. Because when Marco was able to fend off both King and Queen, Zoro one-shot King. And the same goes for Sanji, who one-shot Queen once he unlocked his newest power. Pretty much. There was a bit of difference, but that's generally how this is going to go. I'm not sure how we could get this E any more specific. I don't think he would handle himself as well against Big Mom as Law and Kid did. So that's pretty much where I'm seeing this out right now. So yeah, that's how I think these characters stand. Actually, I might... Mm, I might put Jack on par with Parasparo. As funny as it sounds, I don't think Doflamingo would make it into the top rankings. That's simply how massive the power difference has grown. So, uh, I think that's about all. So my two tier lists are as follows, as you can see on screen. And I think that's about it. This is my opinion. I have no script in front of me, so I'm flying by the seat of my pants. Um, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Remember to stay spectacular. Jojo out. <laughs>